OK. So boys and girls, right now we're going to be recording the last today's activity, which will be the read aloud for the second half of the City of Ember Chapter 2. We'll be reading this out loud. Miss Church will be also our guest reader a little bit later on as we read. So she'll be coming in and doing some of the reading as well. So you don't have to listen to my voice all day long. So I want to go ahead and start right now with that. What I'll be doing is I'm going to um, now pull up the City of Ember book. What we'll do is I'll go to my agenda and you can do the same thing on your agenda, boys and girls. Whenever you're reading, want to read the digital version, you can click on the digital version and you can also open it up on your screen as well to read aloud if you are to follow along. Or actually take that back. It's going to be on the screen anyway, so you won't really need to open it up on your own. All right, so let me go ahead. And I'm going to open up the digital version. It looks like it's going up right now, so let me see if it's there. Uh, looks like it's not there yet, so I better probably just click on open link. All right. Let's open up that link, click on OK. And there we go. Now what I'll do is I'll pull it over to our screen so you guys can see it, because right now, again, Mr. H has 50 million things open on his screen. So we're going to go ahead and close some of those windows down. Make it a little bit easier for me to find stuff. And where are you, City of Ember? There we go. All right, boys and girls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down to our chapter two and let's go to our second part. What I want you to do is have your summary out so you can start writing words down. I'm going to give you opportunities to write the summary word that you think about would help to remind you about what each part would be like about. So we're going to go to number two, chapter two, a message to the mayor. We're going to scroll on down to where the chapter broke right here. And now I'm here on the word now. Let me go ahead and just get started. Now, as Lena sped toward home, she felt immensely grateful to Dune and hoped he'd come to no harm in the pipeworks. Maybe they'd be friends again. She liked to ask him about the pipeworks. She was curious about it. When she got to Greystone Street, she passed Clary Lane, who was probably on her way to the greenhouses. Clary waved to her and called out, what job? And Lena called back, messenger, and ran on. Lena lived on Quilliam Square over the yarn shop run by her grandmother. When she got to the shop, she burst in the door and cried, Granny, I'm a messenger. Granny's shop had once been a tiny place, where each ball of yarn and spool of thread had its spot in the cubby holes and lined the walls. All the yarn and thread came from old clothes that had gotten too shabby to be worn. Granny unraveled the sweaters and picked apart dresses and jackets and pants. She wound the yarn into balls and thread onto the spools and people bought them to use in making new clothes. And I want you to write a summary word now. Use your summary <laughs> word right here and write down. Take a minute to write that for me for just a second. And then I'm going to call on someone on random. I'd love to hear what your summary word is to help to remind you. So, um, Mr. Church, you want to pull somebody out? I'd love to hear your summary word. So when I call your name, just unmute your uh, microphone and tell me what your summary word was. Kate. Kate, you want to tell me your summary word? Um, for that one, I, for that one, I did messenger. Messenger, great summary word. That sort of really sums up what the main point of that part of the passage was. Good job. Let's move on. I'm going to write here. These days, the shop was a mess. Long loops and strands of yarn dangled out of the cubby holes, and the browns and grays and purples were mixed in with the ochres and olive greens and dark blues. Granny's customers often had to spend half an hour unsnarling the rust red yarn from the mud brown or trying to finish fish out the end of a thread from a tangled wad. Granny wasn't much help. Most days she just dozed behind the counter in a rocking chair. That's where she was when Lena burst in with her news. Lena saw Granny had forgotten to knot up her hair that morning. It was standing out of, from her head in a wild white frizz. Granny stood up looking puzzled. You aren't a messenger, dear. You're a schoolgirl, she said. But Granny, Today was assignment day. 
I got my job and I'm a messenger. Granny's eyes lit up and she slapped her hand down on the counter. I remember she cried, messenger. That's a grand job, you'll be good at it. Lena's little sister toddled out from behind the counter with an un un unsteady legs. She had a round face and round brown eyes. At the top of her head was a sprig of brown hair tied up with a scrap of red yarn. She grabbed on Alina's knees. Why not? Why not? She said. Lena bent over and looked down at the, took the child's hand. Poppy, your big sister got a good job. Are you happy, Poppy? Are you proud of me? Let's stop right there. Now's a good time to write down a summary word so we don't forget about what's going on in this chapter. Go ahead and make sure you write it on your paper. And uh, Ms. Church, you want to pick somebody to tell me what they would write as a summary word here? Amaya. Amaya. Do you want to go ahead and tell me what you wrote down as your summary word? If you can unmute your microphone and tell me. I said, I said granny. That's a great one. That's exactly what I would put down for this because that's exactly what's happening. That's a great word to remind me that this is mostly about granny on this part of the passage. Nice job. All right, we're going to go ahead and go on down. Poppy said something that sounded like hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. Lena laughed, hoisted her up, and danced around the shop. Now, I just made a context clue connection here. I noticed that Poppy saying whyna, whyna. And I keep saying Lena, so I bet you that maybe the actual way, because Poppy is saying Lina, that maybe she's trying to say Lina. So I'm going to change my pronunciation based on what I just saw here with this context clue. I'm going to change it now to Lina because that makes more sense now that I read what Poppy's saying. Sometimes that happens, boys and girls. You use a context clue to help you figure out how a word is pronounced somewhere else. So let me continue reading. Lina laughed. Hoisted her up and danced around with her uh, with her around the shop. Lina loved her little sister so much that it was like an ache under her ribs. The baby and granny were all the family she had now. Two years ago, when the coughing sickness was raging through the city again, her father had died. Some months later, her mother, giving birth to Poppy, had died too. Lina missed her parents with an ache that was as strong as what she felt for Poppy, only it was with a hollow feeling instead of a full one. When do you start, asked Granny. Tomorrow, said Lina, or Lina. I report to the messenger station at 8 o'clock. You'll be a famous messenger, said Granny. Fast and famous. Taking Poppy with her, Lina went out of the shop and climbed the stairs to their apartment. It was a small apartment, only four rooms, but there was enough stuff in it to fill 20. There were things that belonged to Lina's parents, her grandparents, and even their grandparents. Old, broken, cracked, fed threadbare things that had been patched and required dozens or hundreds of times. People had never rarely threw anything away. They made the best possible use of what they had. Let's go ahead back to our uh, summary page. Make sure you're writing down a summary word right now. And then um, once you got that, be ready to tell me what summary words you wrote down. I'd love to hear what you said. Um, what do you got, Ms. Church? Jacob. Jacob, do you want to unmute your microphone and just go ahead and tell me what summary word you used? Um, I said apartment. Oh, that's a good one, describing yeah. because they talk a lot about the apartment in this passage. So good job, my friend. Let's go ahead and mute her back up. And we'll go back on to our story. Oops, let me go ahead and we had one person who got accidentally out, so I just want to make sure we're back in. All right, good. All right, Abby, you have a question? What if her name, like when she was trying to say like Lina or whatever, what if she was pronouncing it Lina? That's a good question. That's why I was kind of saying Lina for that one, but you're thinking that's good to see. Pre good question, Abby. Nice job. I'm going to continue on. In Lina's apartment, layers of worn rugs and carpets covered the floor, making it soft but uneven underfoot. 
Against one wall squatted a sagging couch with round wooden balls for legs, and on the couch were blankets and pillows, so that many, so many that you had to toss some on the floor before you could sit down. Against the opposite wall stood two wobbly tables that held a clutter of plates and bottles, cups and bowls, unmatching forks and spoons, little piles of scrap paper, bits of string wound up in untidy wads, and a few stubby pencils. There were four lamps, two tall ones that stood on the floor, and two short ones that stood on the tables. And in uneven lines up near the ceiling were hooks that held coats and shawls and nightgowns and sweaters, shelves that held up pots and pans, jars with unreadable labels, and boxes and buttons of pins and tacks. Where there were no shelves, the walls had been decorated with things of beauty. A label from a can of peaches, a few dried yellow squash flowers, a strip of faded but still pretty purple cloth. There were drawings too. Lina had done the drawings out of her imagination. They showed a city that looked somewhat like amber, except that its buildings were lighter and taller and had more windows. Go ahead and write your summary word down on your paper. Make sure you're doing it right here. And then let's go ahead and we'll ask somebody right now. Abby, I see your hand raised. I just want to go ahead and ask somebody the, the summary word and then I'll get your question in. Alex, do you want to go and tell me what summary words you use for this part? Alex, I see you've unmuted. I wonder if you're having some mic troubles here. If you're able to say something, go ahead and just talk. Otherwise, if you're still having troubles. On, oh, Alex, you there? Do you want to go and tell me your summary word? Right, I'm going to move on to someone else, Alex, if you're having troubles. Um, sorry about that. Um, go ahead and move on to who else? Jace P. Jace P. Go ahead and why don't you tell me your summary word, Jace P. I don't have mine yet. Okay, make sure you write one down for me, my friend. And uh, Jace T, can you tell me one? Imagination. Well, I like that. You're talking about the imagination. She's using her imagination um, in drawing that picture of the city. That's a great way to emphasize about what's going on in that part of the chapter. Nice job. Abby, you want to go ahead and add on something? OK, we're going to go ahead and move on here. What we'll do right now is we'll uh, let me just see right here. All right, we're going to, uh, oh, I just moved down here to where we're at the imagination. So what I want to do right now is we are going to go ahead and uh, Miss, Miss Church, I'm going to have you read. We're going to go all the way down until you get to the next, um, the next little line. There's like a little um, dash, and that's where we'll be stopping today. Uh, originally, boys, I was gonna, boys and girls, I was going to ask you to read to the end of the chapter. We're going to ask you to do that, but what I'd like you to do is just read to the end of the chapter by yourselves. We're going to just do the read aloud just for this first part because I want to give you time. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let me get back to where we were. And then Miss Church is going to come by and read this part. So I want to get back to where we were, which is right here with one of the drawings had fallen to the floor. So um, Miss Church will be coming by right now. And uh, Miss Church, if you just want to pause every once in a while and for the summary word and then um, I'll pick from the jar as I come on over. So I'm just going to do this right now. Move on over. All right. All right. One of the drawings had fallen to the floor. Lina retrieved it and pinned it back up. She stood for a minute and looked at the pictures. Over and over, she'd drawn the same city. Sometimes she drew it as it as seen from afar sometimes she chose one of the buildings and drew it in detail she put in the stairways and street lamps and carts sometimes she tried to draw the people who lived in the city though she wasn't good at drawing people their heads always came out too small and their hands always looked like spiders one picture showed a scene in which the people of the city greeted her when she arrived the first person they had ever seen to come from elsewhere they argued with each other about who should be the first to invite her home Lina could see the city so clearly in her mind, she almost believed it was real. She knew it couldn't be, though. 
The book of the city of Ember, which was all children studied in school, taught otherwise. The city of Ember was made for us long ago by the builders, the book said. It is the only light in the dark world. Beyond Ember, the darkness goes on forever and in all directions. All right, so we're going to pause there for just a second, and you guys can write your summary word. And then Mr. Yates is going to poll. Annabelle. Annabelle, do you want to unmute and then tell us your summary word? So Cannabelle might be having some trouble getting hearing that. So let me try. Um, Gabby, you want to go ahead and tell us one? Or Gabby, you want to talk? Gabby, about you can unmute and tell us your summary word. Drawing. Drawing. That's a good one. All right. Now we're going to pick up right where we left off. Lena had been to the outer borders of Ember. She stood at the edge of the trash heaps and gazed into the darkness beyond the city, the unknown regions. No one had ever gone far into the unknown regions, or at least no one had gone far and returned. And no one had ever returned in Ember from the unknown regions either. As far as anyone knew, the darkness did go on forever. Still, Lena wanted the other city to exist in her imagination. It was so beautiful and it seemed so real. Sometimes she longed to go there and take everyone in Ember with her. But she wasn't thinking about the other city now. Today, she was happy to be right where she was. She set Poppy on the couch. Wait there, she said. She went into the kitchen where there was an electric stove and a refrigerator that no longer worked and was used to store glasses and dishes so Poppy couldn't get at them. Above the refrigerator were shelves holding more pots and jars, more spoons and knives, a wind-up clock that Granny always forgot to wind, and a long, a long row of cans. Lena tried to keep the cans in alphabetical order so that she could find what she wanted quickly, but Granny always messed them up. Now she saw there was beans at the end of the row and tomatoes at the beginning. She picked out a can labeled baby drink and a jar of boiled carrots, opened them, poured, them, poured the liquid into a cup and the carrots into a little dish and took these back to the baby on the couch. All right, we're going to pause right there and you're going to have time to write your summary word. And then Mr. Yates is going to pick someone and we'll see what they write down. Carter, do you want to go ahead and unmute and let us know your summary word? Um, yes, I put unknown regions. Perfect. He put unknown regions. All right. This is our last little thing before we stop for the day. Poppy dribbled baby drink down her chin. She ate some of her carrots and poked others between the couch cushions. For the moment, Lena felt almost perfectly happy. There was no need to think about the fate of the city right now. Tomorrow, she'd be a messenger. She wiped the orange goop off Poppy's chin. Don't worry, she said. Everything will be all right. All right, and then write your last summary word for the day, and then Mr. Yates will pick the last person. Ava. Ava, do you want to unmute and let us know our last summary word? Ava, did you write one? She may be having some connection issues, so let me pick someone else. Mike? Mike, do you want to say a summary word? I put calm. Perfect. All right, so that wraps up this part of the chapter. So you guys are going to finish reading it on your own later, and now Mr. Yates is going to come back. Great job, Ms. Church. Thank you very much. Um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to close out of our book for today, or for right now. I want you to read the rest of the chapter on your own um, and then finish the summary words as, we, um, as you finish the chapter. There's one more thing I want to get you started on, and I'm going to give you time after we're done, after I'm done talking right here to work on both of those. So we're running just a little bit behind, but I wanted to go ahead 
and tell you about the question of the day. And um, I want to show it to you because I don't want everyone to get nervous about it because it is kind of a big one, but I want you to remember it's not something you need to be nervous about. So I want to show it to you right now. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to go to um, our agenda. I'm going to go to my agenda. I'm going to show you where it says question of the day. Um, I see some of your hands up, so I just want to open up the question today and then I'll go ahead and answer questions here. I am going to give you time. We're going to have a break in just a second after we go over the question so you can see what we're doing. Today's question of the day is what's called a pretest. Um, a pretest is, um, and you hear this a lot in math a lot of times, before we start learning something, we want to know what you already know. A pretest is for me to know what you already know about how you write essays. Um, you haven't taken AZ Merit since third grade, and so I want to know how much you already know about how to write essays like they do in AZ Merit. So I know how much I need to teach you during fifth grade. I'm going to open up and show you what I'm talking about. Today, our question of the day is um, going to be a pretest. That means that it's one that I won't be able to really give you too much help on, like how to do it really well. I can help you with if you're confused about what to do with it, like in terms of the directions, but I want to see what you already know how to do on your own. In this one, I want you to read these directions that I'm following, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the stop the. Uh, well, actually, I'll leave the recording going on and we'll include this actually in the recording so you can see it. Um, on this one, boys and girls, we're going to go ahead and in question two or part two of the summary, I'm going to ask you to write what's called a multi paragraph essay. This is like what we do in AZ Merit. We write an essay in which you give your opinion about which person had a better first day, Lina or Dune. You're going to use information from the City of Ember Chapter 2 in your essay. When you write this essay, I want you to read the chapter, plan out your response, write your response, and revise and edit it. You'll need to include an introduction, support for your opinion, like how do you know, and a conclusion. Boys and girls, I want you to remember that this is a pretest. Some of these things like an introduction or conclusion you may not know how to do. Some of these things in these directions may not make quite sense to you, so I can help you understand some of them, but I can't really tell you like this is the best way to write this or this is how you should be writing it. I want to see what you can do writing from this prompt on your own. So I want you to go ahead and get started on that after you're done with your summary today. So once you're done reading the chapter and you finish your summary, I want you to work on this essay. Again, this essay is just for me to know how much you already know how to write. So you're not going to get a bad grade if you're like, I don't even know what a conclusion is, Mr. Yates, or you're not going to get an F on this if you don't know how to write an introduction. I want you to do your best, but I want you to know that this is just for me and Ms. Church to know how good you are as a writer right now at the beginning of fifth grade. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out this assignment. So that we're going back to our agenda. What I was planning on doing right now is giving you time to work on these assignments, both the question of the day and the summary. What I will do right now is I'm going to leave the meeting open now. So you can leave the meeting if you're like, Mr. Yates, I'm good. We're going to go get started on my summary. I'm going to read that. I'm going to make my summary words and I can start on my question of the day. We'll come back at 1.30 on, based on our agenda, and we'll talk about the final assignment for the day. What I'd like you to do is if you still have questions about our assignment that I gave you for chapter two summary, part two and question today, to stay here in the meeting and raise your hand and I'll be able to answer those for you. But if you don't have questions, if you're ready to get started, you are free to go ahead and leave the meeting and um, I'll just go ahead and I'm going to stop recording because right now we're just going to be going to some questions. But what I'd like you to do 